Hey guys, so we're going to continue our discussion about Roman religion and talk about the development of Christianity, which occurred um, over about 100 years or so. So today, at the end of the discussion, I want you to be able to answer this question. What impact did the rise and spread of Christianity have on the world? So we're talking about the ancient world um, after um, or during the Roman Empire and beyond. So to start with, we have to remember that the Romans were very, very much like the Greeks. They were polytheistic and they had many um, gods that they believed in. Most of them were based on the Greek gods. So instead of Zeus, you had Jupiter. Um, instead of Hades, you had uh, Pluto and so on. Um, their behaviors were very similar to the Greek gods and um, the stories varied slightly, but mostly, um, we kind of know about them because we know some um, information about the the Greek gods. The difference between Roman religion and a lot of other religions is that, yeah, they worship their gods every day and they had rituals that they followed, um, but they weren't invested in those religious beliefs. In other words, it was kind of like getting up and brushing your teeth. It was something that you did. You got up and you said your prayers to the gods, you know, whatever the case may be, and you went on with your day. So that emotional connection or that, that deep um, feeling um, or the strong beliefs were really not part of the culture of ancient Rome during this polytheistic time. Um, and that's a really important distinction because when we start to look at the conflicts that the Romans had with the groups of people that they conquered, that's going to make a little bit more sense now because the Romans just didn't have that feeling for um, their gods. Here's the Roman Empire at the height and we're not even seeing um, the southern part in Africa and how much of Africa they actually took over. But this is Alexander's empire and then some. So it goes even farther than Alexander's empire. Remember um, at the beginning we just had this little city of Rome in Italy. Um, it, then it expanded with um, before the Persian Wars, um, the Punic Wars, excuse me, to be the boot of Italy. And then through the three Punic Wars, they took over the little tip of Africa and a lot of this area in, um, in Western Europe. It goes beyond that then. Um, and every one of those words in the peach color is a group of people. So you've got uh, Macedonia and um, I see Mesopotamia, I see Assyria that we've studied, I see, um, who else? Sicilia, which is Sicily today. And all of those groups of people had different philosophies, they had different beliefs, they had different cultural and different religions. Um, and if you think about how hard it would be without TV, radio, mail, um, airplanes, cars, things like that, for somebody who lived even close to Rome ruling this huge empire, how hard it would be to get information. Oh, I'm talking too much, so I'm yawning, sorry guys. Um, to all of the different reaches of their empire. So, so they had some struggles to try to be able to control everything. And so they kind of, they kind of made the rules a little loose and they said, you know, we're going to leave you alone for the most part. We're just going to have a couple of rules that you're going to have to follow. Um, and so they were pretty tolerant of other religions. They, they said, well, I can't control what you do. I'm not there every day, but what we do expect you to do is have some respect for the gods um, that we worship. <sighs> um, <laughs> the Roman gods and show loyalty to them. Um, and for the most part, that made sense to them because they didn't have that deep connection to those gods. They didn't have that emotional connection. And so they couldn't really see and understand why other groups of people might struggle with that rule, um, because they did have a connection to their gods. Um, so you're talking about Judea, which is over here on the Mediterranean coast, um, if you look how far it is from Rome, here's the boot right over here. If you can see my arrow, I'm not sure if that's copying or not. Um, and they were monotheistic. And so they only had the one God that they worshiped. And when Rome conquered them, there were a whole group of Jews that said, all right, fine. 
we'll we will um do as you say we'll follow your laws and we'll honor your gods and they just kind of did it probably in the same way that the romans did not paying much attention to what they were saying or who they were honoring but there was a group um that couldn't take themselves, couldn't bring themselves to do it. Um, and they refused to pay that respect, which was a slap in the face to the Roman leadership because they saw that as um, a major uprising. And so that caused some conflict um, with the Jews and the Roman government. Um, so they started to resist this rule in general, and they believed that God was going to send them a savior, was going to send them a Messiah, someone who was going to help them get back the land that they had been promised. When Moses um, led them out of Egypt, they were promised this land. They were promised that they would always be in control of this land. This is according to the Bible, of course. Um, that's not a historical account. That's a biblical account. Um, but because of those strong beliefs, their behaviors um, towards the rest of the world was one of, of resistance. So they didn't really um, agree to, um, to follow those laws. And so there was a, a big conflict between the Jews and the Roman government who thought that they were fighting back a little too hard. So who is this Messiah? It's Jesus. Jesus comes in and is born um around between 6 bc and 4 bc um and he is considered the messiah he's going to bring the jews back to judea and have control of judea now when we <sighs> college you guys i'm so sorry i should have napped before i did this um <laughs> when we talked about time and you know bce and ce we said that the year one AD or Anno Domini in the year of our Lord, we said that that was targeted or started when Jesus was born because at the time that was the belief. Now we've altered that they've done more studies and they really do think that that he was born a little bit earlier than that, the, somewhere in this area, but they didn't change the calendar to match that. Um, so some of the dates that we have studied in the past or that that the religion teaches us is a little different than what history teaches us. Um, and I, and I want to take a minute to distinguish the difference here, folks. I'm trying to teach you um, the historical parts to this. And I'm making reference to the religious beliefs because it's kind of tied in. Um, but the fact that Jesus was born around this time, the fact that he was viewed by many people as being the son of God, um, and the fact that he did some preaching that's all historical documentation this person did exist he did teach others about religious beliefs kind of like confucius did um, or buddha did um and so he historically has a place in in the history books and in um roman history the religious side of it is that he was the son of god and so there's a distinguished distinction there and i'm not commenting on anyone's beliefs i'm giving you the historical perspective on this all right so for 30 years he's a carpenter he's a kid growing up just a normal everyday kid who some believe is going to do great things someday and he doesn't really start preaching until he's about 30 years old um and realize that he the belief right now um according to historians is that he was around 33 years old when he was crucified so um so he wasn't really preaching for very long before he got the romans attention and they got concerned about what he was teaching um so he is a jew folks he's not a christian Okay, Christianity comes after Jesus is crucified. After the Romans um, sacrifice him and make him a martyr for his religion, that's when um, they start to, his disciples or his followers start to um, create a new religion based on his teachings. So, so that's one of the biggest things that people mistake is they think that Jesus was Christian. No, nope, he was Jesus. And Christ was a title that he had, which we'll talk more about next week. And he um, taught the religion of the Jewish faith. Okay. 
Now, we're going to watch a little video in a minute that's going to tell us what Jesus taught, okay? And what I want you to start thinking about when you're looking at the things that he was telling everyone and teaching people, um, I want you to decide why would people like this? Why, why would people want to follow these beliefs and these teachings? All right. So one of the first things is that he did, he did good things for people. He was a helper. He, um, he helped with healing. And even if you don't ha have any beliefs of the miracles that were performed, he, he went around the regions and, and, he took care of people and he healed them um, or, or cared for them. And, um, and some people take that a step further and say that those were the miracles that were performed. Um, but basically he's pre preaching that there was a single God, um, there, that there was only one God and he was the only one that you should honor, that you should put no God before him. So there comes in some conflict with the Romans as well. They wanted you to honor their gods. And here's a guy who's loud and proud and talking about the Jewish faith and that, no, you can't. God did tell us, honor no one before me. And so there's going to be conflict there. Um, he taught that God would be forgiving. And he taught that God is going to get rid of the evils of the world. And so you're, if you're poor and you're hungry and you're being kind of trodden on by the rich and the powerful, and they're kind of keeping you down, that's going to be really appealing to you. He also promised that you could be forgiven um, if you did things that you, sh you know, that might have been a problem. Oh dear. Hold up folks. I don't know what just happened. I'm hoping 